Oh, hey there. So, um, I stayed up all night long wondering where the sun went, and then it dawned on me. And you know what else dawned on me? You know, we just had this winter apocalypse or whatever in the world it was, and we were completely unprepared. And I know that everybody's like, 2020, what could possibly be worse? But thank God it's finally over. And you're like, oh, but it's not. It's like 2020 and 14 months or whatever, right? Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. Uh, the bad news first is that it's not going to get any better. Okay, I'm sorry. We're celebrating, we're coming up on our, what is it, our quarantine anniversary for our 14 day flatten the curve celebration. Uh, I hope you guys are still wearing your mask, it's super important. Um, <clears throat> and you're probably thinking to yourself, self, it's almost over, we're almost past all the bad stuff. Incorrect. Let me explain why. Okay, so in the Bible, Jesus talks about the fact that in the end times, uh, you'll hear about wars and rumors of wars, and when there's um, famine and pestilence, when there's natural disasters and things like this going on, these are the beginning of birth pains. And then he talks more about it. Um, but our pastor several years ago talked about the beginning of birth pains, and, and I'd never thought about this, and he brought up a good point. He said, when birth pains start, they're relatively mild and pretty spread out. And you're like, oh, what was that? Some more time passed, like, ah. And then you're like, I think I might be in labor. Not me, but a girl, um, you know, who actually hasn't been fixed. Uh, so the more time that passes, then they get more intense and closer together. And so it gets to be more like, oh my gosh, I can't handle this until finally the baby is born. And I got news for you. I'm really sorry to tell you this, but our world is going through that right now. So if you think that this is the end, like we made it past the storm and now it's all gonna be like flowers and sunshine, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. The new normal is not let's wear a mask all the time. The new normal is there's gonna be some tragedy that we never expected to come that is gonna come and overtake us all and we're gonna be like, what in the world? And I know what you're thinking. How unjust and how unfair? How could God let this happen? I'm glad you asked. So, um, typically, God's like, hey, don't do this thing because there are consequences. And then we're like this, you can't tell me what to do, you're not the boss of me. And he's like, ugh. And so then we go ahead and do whatever the bad thing is. Then there's consequences. Then we go look at God like, how can you let this happen? And he's like, I warned you. And you're like, when did you ever warn me? Like, it's right here in writing. And you're like, huh, I don't remember that. And so then we sit there stupidly. Anyway, then he's like, I'm gonna be gentle with you and let you make your mistakes in a small room. I'm gonna let you like figure stuff out before it's too drastic. And then we're like, you can't tell me what to do. And he's like, here we go again. So then there's more consequences. And he's just like, please just listen, because there, I'm not doing this to be mean to you. I'm doing this because like bad things will happen if you do these things I tell you not to do. You're just being mean. You're like, Ugh. I like, you know, as a parent, you see your kids, and you're like, really? Okay, whatever. Anyway, finally, pain is the last teacher to enter into the room. Pain is like, you won't learn any other way, I guess we're gonna teach you with pain. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I got my butt kicked and I'm uh, a little more humble now, and a little nicer now. But sometimes we won't learn with pain. And so he's like, I'm gonna give you a little bit of pain, just enough. You should definitely learn your lesson after that. And we're like, we're not learning nothing. And then he's like, a little bit more pain. I'm just gonna ease it up just a little bit, but please just learn your lesson, we'll be done with this. We're like, no, you can't tell me what to do. And this goes on until finally our firstborn child is dead like the plagues in Egypt, right? And then finally everybody leaves and then everybody's left there going, what in the world just happened? And you're like, you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. So that's what's going on. So anyway, um, we're doing some tape better right now. <laughs> and then we're gonna do some other stuff in the bathroom. We added lights here yesterday, I'll show you. See all these? We added these lights. They're miraculous, here's why. Because you flip the switch, lights come on. Then we added these lights in here, which is also miraculous. You probably can't really appreciate it right now, but uh, lights come on. And then we have this uh, cat door right here, and cats get in here, skunks, possums, squirrels, all kinds of things. I guess uh, whenever the next plague comes, whatever that, what is it, like uh, ice breathing frozen squirrel monsters? I, I hope it's gummy bears. I hope it's something nice. I hope our next plague is like, hmm, who'd have thought? Whipped cream for breakfast. Mm -mm. This is horrible. Please don't do this one again. Thank you, Jesus. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that, though. Uh, so, you know, learn your lesson so you don't have to go through so much pain. Because a whole lot of people that I know, and I'm not even kidding about this, a whole lot of people that I know that do learn their lessons, it's like they're walking around in a, in a rainstorm, thunderstorm, and everybody else is like, it's so wet. And they're walking around with an umbrella going, I don't feel the water. I don't understand. 
and it is entirely possible to be sheltered and umbrellaed from all this pain if you'll just obey God. By the way, I'm running for Senate. Please don't vote for me. Um, I've been fixing a lot of pipes, obviously, but now I'm on, I'm on the job that I was on before this whole snowstorm hit. Um, but whenever you put um, a tub spot on, then they have a female adapter on the inside, and so you have to put a male adapter on here. And PEX usually spins, and shark bite definitely spins, so if you try to tighten this on there, it would just keep spinning forever and it would never get tight. So usually you solder these on, and I realized I didn't show you guys how to solder anything, so now I'm gonna show you how. So first thing you wanna do is uh, clean everything off. I've got these ratty old things from back in the day because I've been doing, using PEX for the last decade. But um, you wanna clean your copper so it looks like a shiny new penny. And that's good, and then you kinda clean all that yuck off of there, right? Because if you don't, then um, you have a place where the solder doesn't stick. Okay, so then my good friend Steve Lux taught me a long time ago not to butt weld. So <clears throat> this is the fitting. A butt weld would mean that if I just took some flux, the flux is what makes it stick, right? If I took some flux and just put it around this edge and I just soldered there, then it would only stick on that, on that edge. But what you want it to do is you want it to stick across this whole thing. So you want your solder to go inside that and fill all the way around. So rather than just putting it on the edge, then you come in here and you kind of fill that whole whole gap and get it all gooped up on there. And then um, get that off your finger because that's important. Then you got to apply heat. This is map gas, which is um, yellow can. It's map gas. Propane is less hot. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to have to uh, torch this thing. And then this is the solder, right? So this is going to make a, a loud noise. <laughs> So this starts turning black, and then the solder melts, and it will fill up that whole gap. And so what happens is it fills that whole void all the way around, and it makes a little drip on the bottom. So I don't want to watch this thing smoking because it stinks, so I'm just going to like cool it off real quick. You can see all that smoke coming off of there. So that's how you solder something. It's still pretty hot. Um, <clears throat> which is pretty important. And then after that, we just put piped up on here and then put the, screw the touch pad on. So that's how that works. Now, it has occurred to me that I probably need to make a series called Painfully Obvious Things That Nobody Ever Seems to Know. And the painfully obvious thing that we're gonna learn about today is how to apologize. Because I feel like a lot of people don't. First of all, they'll just avoid you and they ruin friendships and marriages and all kinds of things, it, careers, over just not being able to say I'm sorry. And it's not that hard. So here's what you do. Are you ready? You don't avoid them. You just tell the truth. Like, I messed up, and you take ownership for it. I messed up. Here's what I did. And I'm sorry. And now I want to make it right. It's not that hard, right? Hey, I want you to know I did this thing. It was a big deal. I'm sorry. I'm going to make it right and then you make it right. And that's a real apology. Not like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but what do you want me to do? That, those are not real apologies, right? Avoiding somebody and then just acting like, you know, it's their fault, that's not an apology. Uh, an apology is you acknowledge what you did wrong, you give details about it, and then you make it right, and you apologize. And then here's the other side of that. If somebody does apologize to you, you say this, hear me out, I forgive you. It's not that hard. And then you let it go. You let that be part of your past. You don't sit there and dwell on it, let it eat away at you like a cancer. You just, man, now that thing is not between us, we can uh, restore our relationship and all is well with the universe again. So we're gonna get back to doing some more work here, but uh, hopefully that'll help you out to rekindle some relationships that need it. Stop hating on people. Mm -hmm. oh. So I got a mask, big, big mask. And then this mask, do I have stuff in my nose? A little bit. My guess is yes. Would I have enough to get me COVID? Uh, it depends on how much COVID you mixed in with the paint. I mixed in a small amount of COVID. That's good. I think we should be fine. Um, so the question I've been asked, like, what if I'm not really a really bad person, but like a kind of a bad person? Is that bad? So. Panther actually asked me that. Panther's Nick's son. And uh, 
was it Panther that asked me that? Probably. Yeah, that makes sense. He's got deep questions. He does. And I was like, um, would you eat an omelet with a hundred eggs, but only one of the eggs was rotten and then just a little bit of poop in there? And he's like, ugh, no. I'm like, why not? It's just one rotten egg and a little bit of poop. He's like, it has poop in it. I'm like, well, there's your answer. So maybe um, it's not a question of like, I'm not as bad as Hitler, but still not so good. So if I had a little bit of COVID, I think I would still die. I mean, I think almost everybody that gets COVID dies. Nick, back me up on this. As much as everyone who drinks water dies. Correct, so that's a good point. So I know a bunch of people that have died with COVID. Um, so I also know a bunch of people that have died with acne or with hemorrhoids or I don't know, cataracts or sore feet or a bad back or all kinds of things. You can die with that, but that doesn't mean that's what killed you. Anyway, we painted this room. It's still kind of streaky because I literally just took the plastic off. But um, tremendous difference, don't you think? Yeah, it's white. Yeah. Can't, can't apply to work at Coke. <laughs> Once you go white. You, you, you get in trouble for it. Credits, right? Yeah, it's, it's not true. It's not true. <laughs> not true at all. So uh, we already did some other things this morning, but now we're gonna do something else. And Sienna, what do you think we should do? Sienna's super smart, right? Tell them how smart you are. Like on a scale of one to 10. A, a 10, yeah, she's a 10, maybe more, maybe like a 12 or 13. Anyway, she's super smart. So I had my engineer draw up these plans on what we could do. You want to explain to them what we're doing here? Mm -hmm. That's eight. That's eight, yep. Um, the slot the windows. Yep, yeah, we're going to put in some screen windows here and here and several here. Okay. Yeah, what else? Does that look like a storm door? And then that's a storm door? It looks like it from the plans, from what I can tell. Yeah. yeah, so I think I think after looking at this, I think I got it in my head. So what we'll do is this over here, we're gonna put in a storm door and then two screen windows. And then we'll take these posts out and build a wall and have four screen uh, screens here. And then we'll have another storm door on this wall and then two screens on that. And then we'll put some siding, some eight inch on center siding on there and then trim it out. And then your dad will put in screens later, you think? Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's pretty smart. So what do you want to talk about today, Sienna? You want to talk about your movie career? So Sienna, do you have a YouTube channel or something? No. No? Uh, TikTok. Yeah. TikTok. Okay, well tell us about your TikToks. I forgot all of them. She forgot. All of them. She just woke up. It's about six o'clock in the morning. It's very bright here at six o'clock in the morning, if you know what I'm saying. Good talk. Good talk, Sienna. Thank you. And then you're going to get your headshots done later on and then get, a, get an agent, right? Yeah. She's, she's super cute and great actress. Blow it up. Well, and look at that energy. It's um, unbelievable. It's been about how long you think? 20 minutes. It's actually been exactly 28 minutes and two seconds. 28 minutes. It's been exactly 28 minutes. She said my about 20 minutes. Break it to my calculations. But my accountant here says exactly 28 minutes. Good morning. So uh, a lot of you probably sit there and think to yourself all day long on any given day, how do I install a vanity? I'm about to show you. So first, you buy a vanity. Then you take it out of the box. Then you put it where it's going to go. See, this is not attached yet. Then you find out where your studs are. Ding, 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 ding. Then you get screws and you screw to the wall. I'll let me demonstrate. It's gonna blow your mind. One. Here comes the hard part. Two. tell by your sign language what you're saying is anger issues okay so I know a lot of people have problems with anger and I'm sure that this whole pandemic and snowstorm and things haven't really helped but um, here's the problem when you're angry all the time that's not good for you right 
JJ? Oh yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not good for your health. It's not good for your relationships. It's not good for your marriage. It's not good. Like if you're a parent, you know, don't exasperate your children, and your children are like, I hate that guy when he comes around or whatever, right? So um, here's a couple of tips. Are you ready? First tip. It's gonna really throw you off. Turn off the news. Stop getting upset about that stuff. You can't do anything about it. You're one vote out of 360 million. I mean, yeah, I get it. Like every vote counts. Blah blah blah. Whatever. I found that if you just disengage from the news, it's still gonna happen. You don't have to get mad about it. It's just fine, right? It's perfectly fine to just like carry on about your life and just love the people around you and be nice to the people around you and do what part you can and make a difference locally and not necessarily get all like, can you believe that somebody <laughs> Because it doesn't really help anything, right? And I found that the news, and this is really gonna mess a lot of you guys up, does not report good news. They have to continue to get news every day because they have advertisers that pay for them to have the news. Therefore, there will always be a crisis. There will always be something that has to have your attention, that has to get you mad and riled up, that you can all argue about on Facebook and stuff. And they're just trying to divide us all the time because that's how they make money. So turn it off and live your life. That's pretty good advice, right, JJ? Oh, yeah. You watch the news a lot? No. But if they told you to do something, would you do it? Yeah. If they said, all you have to do to prevent COVID is walk around on your hands on hot asphalt all day long, would you do that? Mm, no. No. But like, maybe if they started with something small, like you have to wear a four mask at a time. In fact, just put the whole box around your face. It doesn't matter if it's touching the side, just put the box like that. Not individually, just with a, like a horse stirrup or something like that, right? Like a, you know how horses eat the oats <laughs> like that? Would you do that? If you had to, to buy stuff, sure, yeah. But I think it's okay to, to like live your life in freedom. And when everybody else is doing one thing, maybe you don't. And that's okay. I'm going to give you a for example. I have seen on multiple occasions, you're walking out of a crowded place, like a mall, let's say, right? There's seven exit doors right next to each other. Somebody walks into the first exit door. You know what the rest of the herd does? They all go through that one exit door. There's six open doors. One door and they're all going through, they're all bottlenecked. And then I'm like this, um, there's six other doors. And then half the crowd goes, did y'all guys know there's another door over here? And then half the crowd filters over there and follows me like a bunch of sheep. Um, so it's okay to just do something different because it helps. I heard uh, years ago that a sheep in Turkey wandered off of the cliff like, hello, do you know where am I going? Ah, and fell. 1,500 other sheep followed that sheep right off of the cliff. The last 800 didn't even die because there was such a fluffy mess at the bottom that they were just like, ooh, 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 <laughs> So I guess the, <laughs> watch out, cat. I guess the best advice I can give you on this is make sure to be one of the last 800 sheep that falls off the cliff. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna get back to it, buddy. Step number two, or uh, letter B. You've got the vanity in place, then you get liquid nails. This is Loctite, but basically the same thing. And then you squeeze this, you probably jump on there, and then it'll stick, okay? So let me go get the thing, I'll show you. Then you're gonna be like this. What? Here's the tough part. Okay, so um, that part's done. Now, <clears throat> you're probably wondering, why is French bread so stale? And I think it's because they have to import it all the way from France, and by the time it gets here, it's like a little bit hard. I don't like bread like that. Also, I have a friend named Junior, but he's like, his dad's name is also Junior, so he's like, I guess his dad is Junior Senior, and he's Junior Junior. All right, I'll put this faucet in. So, uh, we are wrapping this job up. Now I just want to explain for the record that Nick is an amazing person and that some of this stuff was not included in the price because he's going to do it himself and you know, whatever. So we um, started putting the ship life up, but he's going to put it the rest of the way up and finish this out and make it pretty. We got this medicine cabinet in, which is pretty nice. Um, it's a lot of, it got a lot of functionality and a small amount of space. We got our sink in here which, with these cool faucets. The cabinets have quite a bit of um, different things in there. We did all this shower. We put this light in, we added that, and we added a switch right here. Um, we added this light, we added this um, fart fan, 
sorry, exhaust fan and then a nightlight. So you can tell that that's not super loud. Uh, this toilet is drying right now. It's silicone to the ground. And so that's why it says do not sit on it. Uh, but we put this tile in here as well. We scraped popcorn off the ceiling, floated it, uh, and then textured it and painted it. In here, we put in four recessed lights. In this room, we added this door. He's going to trim it out. Um, we added this sliding glass door, if you remember. Uh, there was conduit. We moved that around. We added these four can lights. We added this beam. We took this wall out, this wall out, and this wall out. We made the closet holes bigger. We moved that window over there. We moved an outlet over here. We moved the switch over to this side. Um, table bed texture and paint in this room. this room, we added these three lights, which is amazing, and come on out. Out here, we uh, made this into a screen report. So what's going to happen is he's going to build screens and build frames that are going to go in all these holes and then put a storm door over on that side as well. Here, let's take a look at it. And then once he does that, he's going to um, caulk and paint everything. But this is a pretty cool thing. We did this one pretty quick. I had my engineer work on that. All right, so the last thing that I wanna say on this is obviously last week we had a snowstorm. So we were working on this, I think, what is today, the fourth day this week? So we worked on it eight days total, right? So we did four days before the snowstorm, then we had a nine day delay from the snowstorm, and then four more days and we got it done. And it's still pretty early. But I wanna say that I know some people that are amazing and I want to brag about that because I think that it's important to have good news. So my friend Steve Lux is a plumber and he's an amazing plumber. He's a second generation, which means his dad was a plumber and then Steve has been a plumber. So he's how old? I guess he's probably 48, 49, something like that. Um, and he has been plumbing like since he was this big, right? And so Steve has repaired, I think, 70 burst pipes since this snowstorm thing happened and he did 30 of those for free because it was people that couldn't um couldn't afford it and so he basically was just like you know what i'm not just have a good day i gotta get on to the next one i gotta help people then my friend mike lowry he's also a plumber <clears throat> i've known mike since uh, we were teenagers and went to high school together mike is also a plumber and mike told me <clears throat> last week that he had 391 people in line with burst pipes last week just to get their stuff fixed. And he's like, I'm doing it as fast as I possibly can. And he goes, sometimes I walk in, I know they can't afford it. So I don't even tell them what it's gonna cost. I do the work, I get their water back on. I say, this is what it would cost. They have this look like, and he goes, but I can tell that you can't afford this. And he rips the bill up and throws it in the trash and goes on his way. And to me, like, I love people like that. I love people that are like, look, we need to make a living. We need to work. That's, you know, that's how we make our money. That's how we feed our families. But when there's a crisis, when people are hurting, we don't take advantage of them. We're not vultures. We're not going to gouge people. And we're not about that life. And so I just wanted to highlight a couple people. Now, I know lots and lots of people that helped out their neighbors. Jeff Spears insisted that when my power was out that I came out to his house. That's the tractor over there. Um, that I come over to his house because I was freezing and then he was insisted I stay the night when I was about to turn into a human popsicle and fed me and was kind to me and him and his wife and family were uh, super sweet and there were so many people that were nice and I just love that. I love the fact that it's not, um, we weren't looking for opportunities to hurt people or to get their money or anything like that. Instead, we were just like, how can we help? And we just like threw money to the side and went, we're here and we're here to help. So anyway, that's this job. We're wrapping it up. These guys are great people. Oh, there's Nick. We love him. Hey, Nick. Oh, you? hey, hi. <laughs> Look at you, just all shy and stuff. Right off the boat. Right off the shy boat. All right, so Nick has a little bit of work left to do, but we did, a, we got you started. You sure did. Elm Fooey. This dog. Good afternoon. So um, this morning we were talking about uh, how people abuse our bodies a lot, right? You were, yeah, I yeah. wasn't, but yeah, you were. We. We. Yeah, you were. We were. Yeah. We weren't, but then we were, and now we are again. We talked about it previously since we were. Correct. Here. And so I see a lot of people that are like, 
oh, it doesn't matter. I'm young. I can do whatever I want to my body. I can eat nothing but Twinkies and drink cocaine and, I don't know, shoot up marijuana and stuff. I don't know, understand how stuff works. But, um, and I'll be fine. And then you're like, you had a heart attack when you're 25. That's a real problem. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, having a heart attack at 25. At 25, that seems a bit young to have a heart attack, right? Yeah. So, we wanted to make a comparison because people are like, yeah, I'm, I'm 10 feet tall and bulletproof because whatever. Um, I'm young and you don't know me. Uh, so, we got some tools here. This tool looks pretty good. Let's see, does it work? Oh, it does. There's a pipe wrench. Some people call it a monkey wrench, right? Turns smoothly and it uh, does pipe. How old is this pipe wrench? I don't know, Dad. How old is Grandpa John's pipe wrench? 40. 40 years or older. This pipe wrench is 40 years old, but it's been taken care of, right? It was not doing cocaine. It was not eating greasy burgers all the time. What else were you not doing? Shooting up marijuana stems, okay? So good shape, over 40 years old. I'm over 40 years old, I don't do that stuff either. This, I bought a few days ago and used it one time. It fell off my grinder four different times. I tried to cut one piece of tile with it. Garbage. This, shooting up marijuana stems, drinking cocaine. Same company. Same, it's same company, right? Somebody was not paying attention. This did not take care of itself. That did take care of itself, right? 40 yeah. year difference. This, this cost $40. That probably cost a nickel back in the day. 40 years ago, it was probably 10 bucks or 15 bucks. No, there's no way it was that much. Right. 40 years ago. I don't know. All right, so tell us the story about this, Nick. You know things. Yeah, that was a vice that I pulled out of Lake Eufaula <laughs> when Trisha and I went uh, to a, a, a houseboat with my parents. And it had a really cool rust patina on it. It was excellent for a, an artwork that I was going to use it for. And then my dad saw it. And he, Hold on, let's talk. Wait, oh, wait, so wait. you're saying this was at the bottom of a lake? For who knows how long. Somebody was like, this is a piece of junk, and threw it in the lake, and then it sat there rusting for, let's call it, 100 years. Maybe it's 100. a Wilton. I can probably find out how old it is. But it's a Wilton. Let's price. just call it 150 years old. Let's call it 150 okay, years old. So it's probably not. Way old. past its prime, very rusty, did a lot of cocaine. Uh, got Sean thrown Carlton. into, la into a, yeah, uh, like, I'm done a lake in Missouri. Ate greasy burgers, froze several times, right? Probably. Then you put it over here, like, I'm going to use you as a piece of art, throw you up on the wall. Like, the right. neglect is what I liked about it. Right. And then what happened? Well, my dad saw that it had been neglected, and then he fixed it. <laughs> he took pity on this thing? And yeah. Then, and then what happened? It's a, it's a working vice again. So you're telling me that he took something that was abandoned and was like, this is just junk, and then made it beautiful again? I don't know. I don't know how many man hours he's been on it either. That's not what the important part of the story is. Yeah. The important part of the story is that you could be brand new and be worthless. You can be very old and still functional. And you can be lost and hurt, and look at this. You can be restored again. It's not too late. Stop drinking the cocaine. Stop shooting up the marijuana stems. Stop eating the greasy burgers. Get your life back in order. Be a vice. <laughs> Be a vice.